Neil, Adam, thank you both very much for sitting down to speak with us today. Absolutely. So let, let's start at the beginning. Neil, tell us what happened at Dan's Tap House. Last February, I went in there to eat uh, with um, one of my children and a friend of theirs. And I also had a friend that was uh, skiing at Whitetail and was arriving at my house that evening. And so I ordered food to go, two burgers and two salads, I believe. And then I also ordered our meals, which we sat there and enjoyed. We paid our check and then waited a very long time um, for our to-go food. During that time, uh, we're sitting at a high top in the back of the bar area. One of my friends came over and sat at the corner of the bar. And after this, I don't know, 30 to 45 minute waiting period for my to-go food, I was bouncing back and forth between my table and my friend at the end of the bar. And I, um, at one point, casually mentioned to him, boy, I really need to get home. My friends are, you know, back from Whitetail. They're hungry. Uh, you know, my food's taken a long time. I'd love to, I wish that, I wish I could get my food and, and leave so I could go feed them. Uh, a waitress uh, came up and was really flustered and she was flustered part way through our meal as well. She, she probably had too many tables or was having a bad day. I used to be a waiter, so the term was in the weeds if you were just right. kind of overwhelmed with everything going on. But she was kind of in the weeds. And so when she overheard me telling my friend that, you know, I've been waiting a long time for my food, in a very agitated manner, she confronted me and, and got in my face and told me that I needed to stop being so impatient that, uh, you know, food takes a long time and that they were very busy. And, uh, and I said something like, it's only two burgers. And she said, right. no, you ordered a lot more than that. And, and I said jokingly, yeah, you're right, but it doesn't take long to cook salads. And my friend like, giggled and, and I laughed too. And, you know, I was just trying to make light of the situation. And she stormed off a couple minutes later. The manager, Mike, comes out and kind of thrusts my food at me. And I was like, boy, he must be in the weeds too. And then I left. Uh, right before I left, I said something to my friend, and I said, hey, because uh, he lives nearby, I'm like, hey, on your way home, why don't you stop in? We're going to open some wine. You can meet meet our guest. And uh, and he thanked me and said that he would. And he showed up here uh, about a half hour later and said, you're not going to believe this. You and I have both been kicked out for being old white men. So, Adam, I, I'm for, from a legal standpoint now, how has the process gone on as far as you know the, trying to settle this before going to court or and for that matter do they seem uh interested in a resolution at all well i can't talk too much about settlement all i can say is there there's been no willingness to make any meaningful resolution from their part uh at this time it's, it's been incredibly frustrating as the litigation marches forward. We have a trial coming up in July. We're supposed to be preparing, gathering all the evidence. We sent discovery to them back in April. Um, took months and months for them to finally respond. After I filed a motion to compel, they produced some half-baked answers. Um, you know, I, I persisted and asked the judge for an order compelling them to provide full answers. And even after that, they provided some more half-baked answers. So I you know, engaged with counsel and said, hey, guys, you need to give us more than that. And they, they ignored us. So I filed a motion for sanctions because they didn't obey the court's order, in my opinion. Um, I filed a motion for sanctions because they allowed the video to be destroyed. We had a hearing about that a few weeks ago um, where it was very tedious. It took me two hours to explain to the judge each and every way in which um, their answers were just wrong. In some cases, they were flat out lies. Um, and um, they're standing behind some pretty feeble objections, uh, boilerplate sort of things. And uh, we anticipate the judge's ruling. The judge has control over you know, how, how much he wants to pressure them. Um, but we expect a, a pretty favorable result there. But we're, you know, the, the discovery is really just heating up. We guys still have to take depositions and subpoena records, um, but they just haven't even given us the real basic beginning stuff. 
it feels as if their strategy is to just drag this thing on, drive the expenses up, and hope that I'm going to relent and go away. So, let me ask you this. So, so just, just to confirm here. So, you were not confrontational at all with the waitress or with the manager, Mike? Absolutely not. Never have been. Wow. Okay. So... So your, your friend arrives, tells you that you've been banned from dance. Mm -hmm. um, so, so why was he the one to tell you that you've been banned from dance? Well, the manager, Mike, uh, came out of the kitchen a second time and went over to my friend Joe and in a very agitated way said, hey, tell your friend Neil he's not allowed in here anymore. And my friend Joe said, I'll do no such thing. I don't work for you. I don't care to get in the middle. And if you have a problem with Neil, you take it up with, with him directly. I'm not your messenger. And he says, fine, then you get the F out too, and you're not allowed back in here either. Okay. And, and now your your friend Joe, now he hasn't been confrontational with them before in the past that you've seen either? He was sitting there with his ex-wife and her boyfriend. I'm sure he was in his best behavior. <laughs> <laughs> Very, good. And, Very had, good. and he had just arrived, so okay. it's not like he had had... You know, right. a few beers right. or anything. I think he was sipping on his first beer. Okay, so after this is all said and done, you then decide to file a lawsuit. Well, there was a little bit more to it. Okay. So after my friend Joe says, what happens if I don't want to leave? He said, I'm going to call the police. And Joe said, I think that'd be a fine idea. Why don't you do that? Okay. So the policeman shows up. And there's some of the body cam, which I'll, I'll make available to you if you want to make your, yes, your, make it available to your viewers. And um, uh, basically, um, when Joe, Joe started asking him questions, this is before the policeman showed up, Joe started asking him questions like, why are you treating me this way? Why are you treating Neil this way? Um, you know, we didn't do anything wrong. And Mike then in a very agitated, loud way, screamed at him and said, just get the F out. All you old men act like you own everything. Just get out. But now, all you old men or was it? Uh, all you old white men. All you old white men. Wow. Okay. Um, so what was, did any of the staff around him seem to have any reaction to that when that happened or? Well, I wasn't there. Uh, it would be nice if I could have, looked at the video footage on premise to be able to see that, but apparently that has been destroyed. Okay. Um, normally you, you ask for, to preserve that kind of thing during a legal proceedings though, don't you? Adam? Yeah. Uh, Neil contacted me shortly after this happened and within five days I had a letter hand delivered to Dan's saying, Hey, there could be litigation and video evidence is very important. It can be overwritten automatically. You have a duty to positively take action to preserve it to make sure it doesn't go missing. Okay. Um, and to our surprise, we learned in discovery that the video had in fact been destroyed. Now, that, well, why did they say it was destroyed? Well, they said it automatically overwrites after 30 days, but okay. just three weeks earlier, they told a federal judge that it overwrites after 90 days. So, which is it then? That's that's a good question. Up. Okay, very good, very good. And that was in a separate discrimination lawsuit okay where somebody else who was a worker there was also claiming discrimination okay um but i did try before it even got to this to when i contacted adam mm -hmm. i did try to squelch this i waited to the next day uh, i reached out to dan through messenger on facebook and said dan this really bizarre thing happened i said i was upset about it I felt that I was discriminated against. I said something about, you know, potentially reporting it to the liquor board if uh, this wouldn't be resolved. And that uh, provided my phone number and I said, this bizarre situation can be resolved. Will you please call me so we can talk? And Dan responded by blocking me. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So, Neil, you're, you're a successful business owner. Now... I want your honest opinion. If someone came to you and said that something like this was happening 
with your business and one of your employees was doing this kind of work, what would your reaction be to that? Well, I certainly would do my due diligence. I certainly would want to talk to the customer. I certainly would want to hear both sides. So after all of this initially transpired, um, did you find any other instances where something similar happened to, to other people? Well, I was just so bewildered by what happened, this bizarre story where I was thrown out when I wasn't even there. My friend got thrown out for my behavior that I never even really did. And then trying to get answers after Dan ended up blocking me, I was just like, this is just like wacko. So I turned to a page called Boone's Bar Community Page, which I helped moderate. And I posted a message on there and said, has anybody ever been treated poorly by the staff at Dan's or is it just me? Then after that, within about, I don't know, less than 30 minutes, I started seeing request to join, request to join, request to join. And within about a 10 minute period, um, 30 to 40 people joined this small group. And I was just like, what's going on? And then uh, what had happened was uh, Mike Skinner, who was the manager there, uh, I guess saw or heard about my posting. He ended up rallying all of his friends and said, hey, I need you guys to all go on here and protect us. And then all of those people started to attack me. They started saying a lot of really horrible things. They went on to my personal page and started picking it apart and saying terrible things about anybody that were in pictures with me and everything. And uh, then their assistant manager, Alex, went on there and said a lot of lies. He said that I had been nothing but problems in there. He said that I have verbally abused every single bartender and waitress in there, that I didn't respect their rules. I don't know what rules they're talking about. There's no rules on the wall. There's no rules on their website or anything like that, uh, that I didn't respect their hours of operation when in fact I've gone there many times and they're closed even though their posted hours uh, are, uh, uh, you know, they should have been open. And he said all this stuff, and, and yet I've never, ever once been confronted by a single employee, manager, or owner at that place where they've asked me to settle down or not be so loud or not talk about politics or whatever it is. I thought I was a role model customer there. I went there two, three times a week. I was jovial with everybody. I would often buy people drinks that were sitting at the bar. And then this is the way I was treated. So this was a coordinated attack against not just what you were saying, but they were actually attacking your character? Yes. Okay. Interesting. So I, I'm very curious, Adam, from a, from a legal standpoint. Now, the, this is obviously a civil suit. Yeah. Now, could Dan's potentially face criminal uh, sanctions as well for this discrimination? Not to my knowledge. Okay. Maryland's um, statute, which prohibits discrimination in place of public accommodation, is um, somewhat toothless okay. and kind of weak. Uh, the federal law provides for civil penalties, but that's about it. Okay. Uh, they're arguably our liquor board ramifications that they could take. Have you been in touch with the liquor board? Yeah, shortly after this, um, we had a meeting with them and let them know. I laid out for them the law and the basis of their authority. Um, and they said they would conduct an investigation and we haven't heard much since. Okay. But they did take some interest. Um, would those records be open to public inspection regarding the investigation? I don't see why they wouldn't be. Okay. Yeah. All right. Might be interesting uh, follow up there. Mm -hmm. So, where to from here? What's what's the the next step in all this process? What what makes this all end without a, a long drawn out court trial? Well, for starters, I'd like a public apology. 
so my reputation could be restored. But unfortunately, the train has left the station. There's been too much damage and it's occurred too long. Um, you know, I think the manager in there uh, has done not only horrible things to me, but many other people, a lot of people have come forward with similar stories. And um, I think Dan ought to be ashamed of himself for not taking action against his employees that are treating people this way rather than supporting them and defending them. It's atrocious. Oh, very good. All right, closing thoughts. Anything else you want to share? I just wish this never happened. It has, uh, it's been a terrible thing to deal with. You know, um, it's been an embarrassment. Uh, there was a bartender at another bar that chimed up on this group that was attacking me and dared me to set foot in Bistro 11, or he would see that he would have his boss throw me out. Um, you know, I went to the grocery store today and I saw somebody look at me. I don't know if maybe it was a classmate and they were trying to recognize me. They didn't recognize me because I have a beard or if maybe they heard about all these things that the Dan's employees have said about me. Uh, it's created stress to my child that was there. It's created stress to my spouse. It's taken a lot of my time and this has been going on too long. It's been over a year, almost a year, and uh, they haven't corrected this problem. So the only thing I can do at this point is get my story out there, let everybody know what kind of place that is, let people make their own decision of whether they wanna go there or not, and allow my attorney to be the best damn attorney in the world and, and get me justice. Right. Adam, uh, closing thoughts? Yeah, well, <clears throat> Neil is that rare client you know who uh, litigation sucks it's not fun it's not easy it's not cheap you know people don't do this unless they feel like they have to and obviously you've heard a lot of other people have had similar kinds of experiences and it takes somebody with a certain level of courage to stand up and say enough is enough we're going to take care of this we're not going to let this happen to anybody else and someone's got to take one for the team and do the hard work and Neil's that guy.